Hello students, welcome to the lecture on ERP and the competitive advantage. And after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand ERP system and create competitive advantage. Discuss about the financial and enterprise performance management solution. Explain the ERP modules. Let's start with what an enterprise resource planning ERP system is. Enterprise Resource Planning ERP system is multi-module transaction-based application software that helps organization to manage the vital parts of the business. While ERP systems are often the preferred solution, many of the legacy systems they replace offer a great deal of value from their unique bespoke features. For example, when Dow Coin implemented SAP, they found that their staff had count rows. Features of the legacy system offered more functionality than the ERP that replaced them. While there has been extensive research on the issues concerning implementing these systems and achieving the promised benefits, less research has been done on ERP system in relation to competitive advantage. Different frameworks have been developed in this field of study defining competitive advantage. The latest contribution to the debate focus on the unique collection and dynamic management of an organization's resources and its evolving capabilities. Many organizations invest a vast amount of resources in ERP solution without analyzing the linkage to competitive advantage, the fit between the ERP system and the organization's strategies often ignore. We have investigated how and to what extent a company could achieve a competitive advantage by using ERP. Is an ERP just another tool that is necessary to stay in the market, the cost of doing business? Is as IT a commodity and therefore irrelevant and can IT give a substantial advantage when used effectively? How do some organizations outperform their competitors that use similar ERP system? In many organizations, it is the accounts and finance department which are the biggest supporters of the ERP implementation. This is because by using sales and operation planning process, they will be able to tie financial implication to the forecast and determine where the organization should be headed financially for the period, year or even longer. This information can be used to ensure bank forecast, growth forecast and increase the value of the organization. For any organization, if one can achieve the sales targets, the departmental budget generally fall in line so that profit goals are met. Use this process to plan for profits, growth or to manage through difficult period. It is the fact that it is easier to implement the accounting application than those for resource planning. This is because less time is typically required for process definition and also because the implementation path is more straightforward. Most companies that have some sort of a computerized information system would have computerized their finance and accounting processes. The reason for this are based on the relative immaturity of effective formal resource planning and scheduling processes versus the high degree of maturity on the finance and accounting side. Finance and accounting people have an important role to play in the ERP implementation projects. In addition to implementing their own new processes, they have a role to play on the ERP executive committee, the project team and spin-off task forces. They will need to devote some time to getting educated on ERP system. It is necessary for them to understand the logical structure of ERP benefits to be achieved from running the business with only one set of numbers and the competitive advantage that highly effective ERP can provide. So it's helpful to think of ERP systems in a historical context. Imagine that we have a company making widgets. We have a sales team, we have a manufacturing team, we have accounting, we have administrators trying to watch over the whole process. Now if you think about how a firm develops its IT systems over time, they generally start in some place like accounting. And accounting handles lots of data, they have to deal with a lot of different issues with data, with generating a lot of different reports, so they're typically one of the first users of information technology. So in our example, we have a widget producing factory here. The accountants may choose a system, you know, like Excel at the simple end, or something like QuickBooks at the top end, that fits their needs. Right? So we have QuickBooks. Now QuickBooks has its own little pool of data, its own application, its own interface. Meanwhile, however, our sales department also wants to use technology. 
So they're going to go ahead and then find the system that best, best fits their needs. And then our operations, our widget factory, is going to find some sort of scheduling system. Now over time we start to realize as an organization that we have a lot of duplication here. I mean, why are we inputting someone's name here and then re-inputting it here and then re-inputting it here? And so we start transmitting data from one system to another system through interfaces. And the idea that you have these pathways where data goes from point A to point B to point C. These interfaces are well defined. So we say here's how the data is going to come out of our sales system and go into our operations system. And then conversely, going for operations into our accounting system. However, this lends to problems, right? This is it's called batch processing because the system gets transferred in batches, right? So maybe if once a week we transfer data from here to here, you know, and once a day transfer it from here to here. And we end up with lots of different legacy systems, right? Sales has a system that works for them, they've been using it for years, they don't want to change. Right? Maybe the manufacturing company that did our operations system was gone out of business. Or the programmer we hired for our accounting system has quit or retired off to the Bahamas somewhere. So over time we end up with a brittle system. Right? Anytime something changes in one of these systems, it may or may not cause problems down the line. So say we have a customer with a very long last name, maybe 20 characters in the last name. This system can handle it, but perhaps this system can't. Right? So we don't really know those systems until we upgrade something, or we change the manufacturing system, and we find that it requires a different format for its data. And also want it to copy out accounting data in the way we've expected it to be. So they end up with a very brittle system over time. This also is costly in terms of opportunity costs. And once you buy these systems, generally they don't cost much, except if you start counting things like having to deal with poor intelligence. Right? Management asks the information, all right, well, in one, one point in time, how much money do we have in the system? They want to look at all different systems at one place. How do they find out with the current three batch systems we have in place now? They can't do that. We also have issues with maintenance. Over time, hiring programmers that can work on our old COBOL system for operations gets more and more expensive. So we lose some things. We lose flexibility. We lose the ability to have data go from one point to the other point seamlessly. So one of the ways that companies are reacting to this is by having ERP systems, right? Enterprise Resource Planning. The idea is we have one single common database that serves different areas. So all the data, whether you're in sales, whether you're in accounting, whether you're in manufacturing, all sits in this central database. And there's some really good features about this because we now know that if someone gets input into the database, it's in one place. And if you fix their name here, it gets fixed everywhere, no matter if it's sales doing it or accounting doing it or operations doing it. Management also likes this because now they can see all the different systems in one point in time. We do things like dashboards or key performance indicators. So it makes it a lot easier to manage the data. Now there's some things if we think about this that advantages turn into disadvantages. Right? So we have pools development cost. Right? The idea here is that you hire one software company and that one software company makes systems for a lot of different companies. So instead of everyone building their own copy of Microsoft Word, we now have Microsoft doing it for us and saves each individual company a lot of money. But that directly leads to lack of differentiation. If we all use Microsoft Word, now our office systems are no longer a source of differentiation for our business. Similarly, it requires best practices. Right? Microsoft decides what's the best way to create a document. Well, perhaps that best way of making a document doesn't really fit our organization, in which case it's too bad. We have to redesign our organization, BPR, Business Process Redesign. So it reduces our cost, but it also reduces our flexibility. Right? It increases our standardization, but it also means that we might have some subsystems that are not quite optimal. Imagine if you're the accounting department. You love QuickBooks, it works well for you, but then the management comes in and says, hey, we're all going to go ahead and standardize on this ERP system. It works for sales, it works for manufacturing, and it sort of works for accounting, but it's not nearly as easy to use for you. This is one of those times when you, as an organization, you're going to assume some trade-offs. You're going to say, well, it's not great for accounting, but manufacturing loves it, so we're going to go with this system. You have end-to-end -end reporting, but it requires you as an organization to be a lot more disciplined. Right? We have to agree on our data. You know, what does it mean to have, say someone's a customer? What kinds of financial data do we need on our customers? What kinds of reporting do we need to create? What kinds of standardized labels do we need to decide upon? So it requires, as a company, you become more disciplined. Right? 
And so it increases control, right? Which could be good, it could be bad. Depends on how good your management systems are and how happy people are to be closely managed. Let's look at the implementation timeline. We can roughly group it into four different parts. Right? We have some sort of upfront piece. We decide in advance how we're going to do our systems. There's some sort of implementation phase where things all kind of go to pot. Stabilization phase where things will get a little better and there's some sort of continuous improvement. Right? And this is typically a long process. It's very easy just to buy the software. It's very hard to reshape the organization to make it work for you. So here's some standard issues you run into. So in the initial design phase, you're really shifting your mindset of how data are owned. Right? Before you had different pots of data. Right? This is the sales data, this is accounting data, this is manufacturing data. After the design phase, you move into sort of a river mindset. Data doesn't really belong to any one organization or one piece of the organization. Instead, it belongs to everybody. So you have to agree, how are we going to say about this data? Right? How do we decide how to record things? How do we decide what data you need? How do we decide how, how well to validate data? Because now you have sales inputting data and it's being used by other people. We have issues with customization. Right? Most systems allow you to tweak things like labels and categories, but it may be that certain companies have unique processes and they have to decide up front are we going to allow everyone to change the system? Or are we going to allow third-party systems? Do we go back to some part of that batch system where we have different pieces that all have to talk to each other? And lastly, we have to decide how we're going to change our processes to match what the software wants us to do. Right? And again, these things kind of get tied together. How much do we want to do what the software wants us to do and how much do we customize it? Next, we have our implementation phase. This is typically underestimated in terms of disruptiveness in the business. If you've ever been through an ERP change, it's typically not a lot of fun. You find out things like software bugs. Right? You find out the data is not being transferred properly. You find out things like people don't always agree on what it means to actually close a sale. It's very difficult. And so this is where change management really comes in handy. There's whole classes on this, how to manage projects, how to manage change. But it's really difficult because it's telling people how to do their jobs. Then we have stabilization, right? These are where we start fixing all these sort of things we've discovered during this disruptive implementation phase. Right? We find bugs in the software, we do clean on our data. And lastly, hopefully, we get to the improvement phase. And this is where people generally were selling you back here in the design phase, hey, we can accomplish this if we just do the software. This is where we finally get to do things like matrix organizations, improving your intelligence, doing new features, but you can't do this stuff until you fix the bugs, you clean the data, you decide how to customize things, you go through all the disruptive implementation phase. Let us now study next topic, ERP system and how to create competitive advantage. A new approach to competitive advantage has emerged in the last 10 years called the resource-based view and this focuses on the resources behind the generic strategies. In this view, resources that enable an organization to perform specific strategies are emphasized. One uses a resource-based view to define competitive advantage, building on two basic assumptions. The resources and the capabilities possessed by competing firms may differ, and these differences may be long-lasting. The first criterion in the framework is, does a particular resource add value to the firm? This question is related to the possibility to reduce cost of increased revenue by product differentiation when exploiting resource. The second criterion in the framework is, is a particular resource a capability heterogeneously distributed across competing firms? If all firms have access to the same resources, the resources will not give a competitive advantage. It will most likely result in competitive parity. The third criterion in the framework is, is a resource or capability imperfectly mobile? If firms without valuable resources have no problem in acquiring, developing and using it compared with firms that already possess this resource, then it will only be a source of temporary competitive advantage for the firms that originally control it. If a resource is hard to imitate, the firms that control this resource are in a position to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage through this resource. Earlier research showed that the immobility criterion is often based on three conditions. These conditions make it hard, if not impossible, for competitors to imitate the resources. The three conditions are 
the role of history. A firm may be the right place at the right time for acquiring and developing an important resource. Some resources can also only be developed over long periods of time. For example, eBay.com was the first major mover in the development of internet-based auction software and has become highly successful in this domain. Amazon.com developed auction software later and has struggled to compete with this regard. Causal ambiguity. The resources can be taken for granted but not codified. They are invisible assets and are therefore a tacit capability of the organization. The resource can be made up of many small decisions and actions that are hard to monitor. Competitors will not know what to imitate. Social complexity. A resource may be so intertwined in social networks, cultures, relationships and so on that it will be very hard for a competitor to deconstruct the social structures. Extension to this framework have been made in later years. The extensions are aimed at organizational and business resources that can lead to a competitive advantage based on ERP system. Organizational capabilities for competitive advantage. Manager's knowledge of the organization and the ERP system. Top management support. Open and flexible culture. Training, learning and communication. Business competent IT, IS. Organizational structure and processes. The majority of the managers in both organizations stated that they had not lost any competitive advantage with their new ERP system. It was stated that important structures or processes had to be reshaped because of the ERP system, but none of these had eliminated the competitive advantage. Did you know, in the 1990s, information technology and business process reengineering, used in conjunction with each other, have emerged as important tools which give organization the leading edge. Students, can any one of you explain what was the significance to deployment and optimizing ERP and financial systems? Standalone financial consolidations and reporting applications are very effective in streamlining financial consolidation and reporting when implementing a complete EPM solution is not practical. But a modular suite of application integrating financial consolidation and reporting and other EPM application provides the most comprehensive support for the entire management cycle of goal setting, modeling, planning, monitoring, analysis and reporting with the fastest name to benefit financial consolidation and reporting applications are important. Components of EPM, enabling customers to link strategies to plans, monitor execution and gain insights to help manage and improve performance. These applications can be used independently to address the financial consolidation and reporting segment of the management cycle. But together, they support a closed-loop EPM cycle. A robust financial consolidation and reporting application brings together trial balances and other information from one or many general ledger, ERP or other transaction system. Actual results from one or many transactional general ledger or ERP system will typically be loaded or integrated into financial consolidation and reporting solution at the period end. Once the consolidation process is complete, reports and dashboards can be assessed through a web browser or Microsoft Office user interface. As we know, a majority of companies do not have a single ERP instance. There are several key reasons for this. The cost to convert to a single ERP is prohibited. Companies demand greater autonomy and flexibility in remote operation. This is referred to as two-tier ERP. Mergers bring in new general ledger or ERPs that are not immediately converted to a single corporate standard. The company might want to keep divisions separate as part of a sell-off or public offering strategy. Single instance ERP solutions are installed and maintained at a single location but are accessible by all functional users worldwide. This type of ERP system can add significant value in some companies, for example, where large-scale manufacturing involves closely linked supply chains as another example. In certain segments of the financial services industry, financial transaction requirements can only be met by single instance ERP system. Although these systems can be costly, the return on investment of just-in-time purchasing and the corresponding reduction of inventory carrying costs can justify a single instance ERP project.
Even after the transition, the single worldwide ERP, there remains strong need for a robust ERP independent financial consultation and reporting solution owned and operated by the finance team. Students, what is the role of system application integration? All ERP packages contain many models. The number and features of the modules vary with the ERP packages. Some of the most common modules available in almost all packages are finance, plan maintenance, quality management, material management, inventory management, manufacturing and production planning, sales and distribution. Some packages will have a subset of this and some will have more modules or features. The entire concept of information technology is based on the premise that providing the right information to the right people at the right time can make a critical difference to the organization. Much of this key information could be taken from the financial data, but merely having, but merely having the financial data is not enough. We need a set of processes and views of data that provided up to the minute financial information in exactly the form we need it to make that critical difference and help with that critical decision. The finance modules of most ERP systems will have the following subsystem. Financial accounting, general ledger, accounts receivable or payable, special ledger, fixed asset accounting, legal consolidation, investment management, investment planning, budgeting, controlling, depreciation forecast, simulation, calculation, controlling, overhead cost controlling, activity-based costing, product cost accounting, profitability, analysis, treasury model, financial accounting. The objective of a good financial accounting system is to provide company-wide control and integration of financial information that is essential to strategic decision making. The financial accounting model of an ERP system gives the ability to centrally track financial accounting data within an international framework of multiple companies' languages, currencies, and charts of accounts. General Ledger The General Ledger GL is essential both to the financial accounting system and to strategic decision-making. Through active integration with business processes in logistic and in the accounting sub-ledgers, the GL serves as a central pool of financial data for financial reporting as well as for other accounting areas. Accounts receivable and payable, the ERP system offers financial overviews of global business partner, relationship in the accounts receivable and payable function. These sub-ledgers are integrated both with the general ledger with the areas in sales and distribution and materials management where financial data originates. Special ledgers, fixed assets, accounting. Asset accounting manages the company's fixed assets. Within a financial accounting system, asset accounting serves as a sub-ledger to the general ledger providing detailed information on asset-related transaction. Legal consolidation. Consolidated financial statements need to be integrated effectively with operational data at the individual company level. By using different valuation methods, we can plan balance sheet strategies to suit the company's requirements. Investment management provides extensive support for investment processes right from planning to settlement. Investment management facilitates investment planning and budgeting at a level higher than that needed for specific orders or projects. We can define an investment program hierarchy using any criteria, for example, department-wise. Investment program allows a distributing budgets which are used during the capital spending process. The system helps monitor and thereby avoid budget overruns. Investment management provides tools enabling us to plan and manage capital spending projects right from the earliest date. Investment management module recognizes the importance of the asset accounting aspects of investment measures. The achievement of world-class performance demands delivery of quality, products expeditiously and economically. Organizations simply cannot achieve excellence with unreliable equipment. The attitude towards maintenance management has changed as a result of quick response manufacturing, just-in-time reduction of work-in process inventory, and the elimination of wasteful manufacturing practices. Machine breakdown and idle time for repair was once an accepted practice. Times have changed. Today, when a machine breaks down, it can shut down the production line and the customer's entire plan. 
The preventive maintenance model provides an integrated solution for supporting the operational needs of an enterprise-wide system. The plan maintenance model includes an entire family of products covering all aspects of plan or equipment maintenance and becomes integral to achievement of process improvement. The major subsystem of a plan maintenance model are preventive maintenance control, equipment tracking, component tracking, plant maintenance calibration tracking, plan maintenance warranty claims tracking. Inventory management system allows a management stocks on a quantity and value basics, planning, entering and checking any goods movement, and carrying out physical inventory. In the inventory management system, the physical stocks reflect all transactions resulting in a change in stock and thus in updating inventory levels, the user can easily obtain an overview of the current stocks of any given material. For each material, not only are the stocks in the warehouse shown, but also the stock ordered but not yet delivered reserved for production or for a customer and the stock in quantity inception can be monitored. The stocks are managed not only on a quantity basic but also by value, a prerequisite for cost accounting. The delivery of customer and economic value through integrated management of the flow of physical goods and associated information from raw material sourcing to delivery of finished products to consumer. The definition one American professional association put forward is that supply chain management encompasses the planning and management of all activities involved in sourcing, procurement, conversion, and, and logistic management activities. Importantly, it also includes coordination and collaboration with channel partner, which can be suppliers, intermediaries, third-party service providers, and customers. In essence, a supply chain management integrates supply and demand management within and across company. Some experts distinguish supply chain management and logistic, while others consider the terms to be interchangeable. Supply chain management is also a category of software products. The SCM is a process of planning, implementing, and controlling the operation of the supply chain as efficiently as possible. Supply chain management spans all movement and storage of raw materials, work in process, inventory, and finished goods from point of origin to point of consumption. Hi, I am Sharma. I will be discussing about the supply chain management. So do you know the definition of supply chain management? No? Okay, let me tell you. According to SOCR model, Supply chain management is nothing but to plan, source, make, deliver and return. According to the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, CSCMP, supply chain management encompasses the planning and management of all activities involved in sourcing, procurement, conversion, and logistics management. It also includes the crucial components of coordination and collaboration with channel partners, which can be suppliers, intermediaries, third-party service providers, and customers. In essence, supply chain management integrates supply and demand management within and across companies. Do you know the problems addressed by supply chain management? Okay, let me tell you one by one. 1. Distribution network configuration, number, location and network missions of suppliers, production facilities, distribution centers, warehouses, cross docks and customers. 2. Distribution strategy, questions of operating control, centralized, decentralized or shared. Delivery scheme, for example, direct shipment, pool point shipping, cross docking, DSD direct store delivery, closed loop shipping. Mode of transportation, for example, motor carrier, including truckload, LTL, parcel, railroad. Intermodal transport, including TOFK trailer run flat car and COFK container run flat car. Ocean freight, air freight. Replenishment strategy, for example, pool, pusher hybrid. And transportation control, for example, owner operated, private carrier, common carrier, contract carrier, or three place. 3. Trade offs in logistical activities. The above activities must be well coordinated in order to achieve the lowest total logistics cost. Trade-offs may increase the total cost if only one of the activities is optimized. 
For example, full truckload FTL rates are more economical on a cost per pallet basis than less than truckload LTL shipments. If, however, a full truckload of a product is ordered to reduce transportation costs, there will be an increase in inventory holding costs which may increase total logistics costs. It is therefore imperative to take a systems approach when planning logistical activities. These trade-offs are key to developing the most efficient and effective logistics and SCM strategy. 4. Information. Integration of processes through the supply chain to share valuable information, including demand signals, forecasts, inventory, transportation, potential collaboration, etc. 5. Inventory management. Quantity and location of inventory, including raw materials, work in progress, WIP, and finished goods. 6. Cash flow, arranging the payment terms and methodologies for exchanging funds across entities within the supply chain. These are the major concerns in supply chain management. The supply chain, a term now commonly used internationally, encompasses every effort involved in producing and delivering a final product or service from the suppliers, supplier to the customer, customers. The SEM includes managing, supplying and demand, sourcing raw materials and parts, manufacturing and assembly, warehousing and inventory, tracking order entry and order management, distribution across all channels and delivery to the customer. A supply chain is a collection of interdependent steps that when followed accomplish a certain objective such as meeting customer requirements. Supply chain management is a general term that encompasses the coordination of order generation, order taking and offer fulfillment or distribution of products, services of information. Numerous independent firms and customers are involved in a supply chain, example manufacturers and parts suppliers, parcel shippers, sender and receiver, wholesalers and retailers. The WWW and Extranets have shown a great potential in linking and managing these entities into a virtual organization. In years past, manufacturers were the drivers of the supply chain managing the pay seat which products were manufactured and distributed. Today, customers are calling the shots and manufacturers are scrambling to meet customer demands for options or styles of features, quick order fulfillment and fast delivery. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The latest contribution to the debate focus on the unique collection and dynamic management of an organization resources and its evolving capabilities. In many organizations, it is the accounts and finance department which are the biggest supporters of the ERP implementation. This is because by using sales and operation planning process, they will be able to tie financial implications to the forecast and determine where the organization should be headed financially for the period, year or even longer. The ISO 9000 series of standards defines the functions of quality management and the elements of a quality management system. The functions in the quality management module supports the essential elements of such a system. Standalone financial consolidation and reporting application are very effective in streamlining financial consolidations and reporting when implementing a complete EPM solution is not practical. The achievement of world-class performance demands delivery of quality products expeditiously and economically. Organizations simply cannot achieve excellence with unreliable equipment.